Hi church family, hope you're all keeping well. You know, over the last few days or so, Austin and I have been praying and thinking about what to bring as a word of encouragement. And as we sought the Lord's word, voice, he sat us down on a cold and windy Sunday afternoon. And for the first time in quite a while, we were actually able to read cover to cover through a whole book of the Bible as husband and wife, which is actually really nice. And the book that God gave us to read together was Nehemiah. You know, in the Bible, there seems to be this, this recurring theme of resetting and rebuilding. I guess the most famous instance is probably the, the story of Noah and his family and their call to rebuild after the huge reset of the flood. Another such story from the Bible which talks about rebuilding is, is the book of Nehemiah, where we see how you know, Jerusalem's walls are broken and burnt down which I guess is, is representative of the brokenness of the nation. But God makes something surge up within the spirit of a man called Nehemiah to rebuild the city's wars. But not just the wars, but in many ways the whole nation. In some sense, during this lockdown period, the, the church worldwide is being forced to undergo a reset of sorts. And as we look forward to the to this very new world ahead we feel that God is really raising up a, a zeal within his church to strengthen what remains to begin a, a great rebuilding amongst many of his saints all around the world so I guess what we wanted to share today is really three things that we felt the Holy Spirit showed to us as we as we walked through the book of Nehemiah together Firstly, we noticed that as soon as word came to Nehemiah from Jerusalem that the city was in a very bad shape and that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and its gates burnt, Nehemiah was so moved that he sat down and wept and mourned for days. He fasted, prayed, confessed his sins, both personal and corporate sins, then cried out to the faithfulness and mercy of God. And so what we felt the Lord say to us was that, the foundations of any successful build, rebuilding will begin with and be built upon a personal and genuine grieving over all that is broken, both the broken things in our own lives, but also the broken things in the church, the broken things in our communities, the broken things in our nation, and the broken things in the world. Secondly, we also noticed that as Nehemiah and the people in Jerusalem started, you know, rebuilding in faith that God will prosper their real rebuilding there was this um, phenomenal progress uh, in a very short amount of time in fact the rebuilding of Jerusalem's wars resulted in a huge you know surge of unity amongst God's people as they stood shoulder to shoulder with one another they miraculously rebuilt the whole city's wars in just 52 days and and what's more deeper social injustices were addressed as part of that whole rebuilding process so what we felt the lord saying is that when this rebuilding begins in his church in this season ahead all around the world progress will be made at such a phenomenal pace there'll be collaboration between churches which will rise to new levels as the body of christ uh, really begins to function as one body and spiritual ground we once thought of as long lost will be reclaimed um, for God's glory. And the last thing that God highlighted to us as we read was the sobering observation that there was this fierce opposition to the rebuilding of Jerusalem's wars. Enemies of Judah mocked God's people saying things like, would they rebuild the wall out of a heap of rubbish? Even if a fox goes up on the wall, the wall will crumble. And so, you know, these enemies deliberately tried to sow doubt amongst the people of Jerusalem. They also deliberately stirred up disunity. They spread false accusations against them and generally created an atmosphere of fear amongst God's people. And so as we read this together, we felt the Lord impress upon us that in this season of rebuilding ahead, we need to be extra vigilant of the schemes of the enemy. The devil will be frightened when he sees such rapid progress in the kingdom of God. And so he will try to slow and even stop the momentum. We must therefore be vigilant, but also prepared to be despised for God's work. 
I know with this encouragement that we bring today it might be both exciting and a little bit scary, um, but we do ask that you take it to the Lord and weigh it up um, as an encouragement, but also maybe to even read through the book of Nehemiah yourself, which we, we personally really felt the Lord um, tell us um, is a blueprint for the season ahead. How about we pray? Heavenly Father, uh, we just thank you for your sovereign plans uh, that cannot be thwarted. And we are so excited uh, about um, this new world ahead and all the opportunities that it brings. Father, we just pray that um, first and foremost, you, you give us a, a great burden for all that is broken uh, in the world. We pray that you start with our own lives, that you show us the brokenness in our own lives and that we'll grieve um, and mourn over those things, but that would have great hope that you are bring restoration. Secondly, Lord, we pray that we would have great faith um, that you and you alone will bring uh, a prospering of the rebuilding efforts uh, in your church and um, with your church's influence across all the world. And thirdly, we, Lord, we just um, pray that you would um, give us uh, acute awareness of, of the enemy schemes, that we'll be vigilant, but also, Lord, that we'll be prepared to suffer for your name's sake. Uh, for the rebuilding and the progress of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.